He came to that which belonged to him. And they who were his own did not receive him and did not welcome him. But to as many as did receive and welcome him, he gave the power, the right, the privilege to become the children of God. That is to those who believe in his name, who owe their birth neither to the bloods, nor to the will of the flesh, nor to the will of man, but to God. They are born of God. The Word became flesh and dwelled among us, and we saw His glory. Such glory as an only begotten Son receives from His Father, full of grace and truth. Okay, so I read a whole portion there, right? In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. All right, so he says he came to his own. The whole thing about the light and the life is just amazing. Full of light, full of life, right? That's Jesus. Darkness could never overpower him. The Word became flesh and dwelled among us. That's Jesus. So the Word became flesh, dwelled among us. He came to his own, and his own, Israel, did not receive him in that time. The full, well, some of them did. <laughs> but he came to his own, and his own received him not. But to as many as did receive him, he gave the authority to become the children of God, who owe their birth neither to the blood nor to the will of man, but to God. They are born of God. Born of God. Right? Okay, so a lot of us do not really understand, or a lot of times we do not really, un we do not really understand that we are not just normal human beings. You used to be <laughs> a normal human being, but you used to be that. But now that you have received Christ, you became a child of God, a son and a daughter of the Most High God, right? You used to be, you used to be a child, uh, uh, just a normal man, uh, just a normal person. But now you are <laughs> a son of God. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17. It says, therefore, if any person is engrafted in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the fresh and the new has come. All right, so if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. To as many as did receive him, he, be, he, he, he gave the right, the privilege to be the sons of God, the, the children of God. They are born of God. A new creation, born of God, not from the will of a man or person, but of God. They are born of God. Okay, let me, let me explain this. So God is really your Father. He, it's not figuratively. It's not like He's, he's your Father, but you are a human and He's another type of species almost. <laughs> it's not like... Um, Comparing monkeys to humans. I know some does, like with th science and stuff. We don't believe in that. But it's not like God is a human and we are monkeys. <laughs> no, no, no. It's, it's, it's like this. We are of the same kind. We have the same DNA. The same nature. The same presence. If you, look at, if you look at a son and a daughter of God, you'll see the same nature of God reflected in and through their lives. There comes a time where you've opened up your heart for Jesus Christ and you, you, came, you become you, you, the seed or the word entered your heart and you became born again. Born from above. A new creation, not an old one patched up. A new creation man. A new person. There was a time that you received the living word of God. And that living word of God came into your heart. And you became born again. Or you were born again. Born from above. Alright. So when did that happen? I can't, I can't say exactly when it, when it happened. But it has to do with you hearing the word and then believing it. Opening up your heart before God. And you were born again. 
then you believe and you spoke it out. You say, I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. He's my Savior. I accept Him today as my Savior. I believe. So you declare it with your mouth. But before you declared it with your mouth, something happened. The Word of God found entrance into your heart. That's, listen, that seed is not of normal human origin. It's not a mortal. <laughs> it's an immortal seed of life that entered you. Christ living inside of you. That's why I say, if we say we are born of God, then the quality of life the nature of God. Everything about God was deposited in us. He came to that we might have life and have it more abundantly. That's John, John 10 verse 10. He says, I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. In other words, the very life of God lives in me. <laughs> I've got a river of life flowing out of me. It makes the lame to walk. And the blind to see opens prison doors, sets the captives free. I've got a river of life flowing out of me. Spring up a well. <laughs> right. It's flowing out of me. Because I have God as my Father, the same nature that what He has, what He is, has been given to me as a son and a daughter of God. We are not humans trying to live like God. That's why I say Christianity is not about people that tries to live like Christ. It is about Christ living through people. I'll repeat. <laughs> it's not about people that tries to live like Christ. It's about Christ living through people. Made us, he made us one with Him. He made us one with Him. We were born from above. God is now our Father. We are a new creation. Yo. So I think a lot of our problems comes because we, we're not sure of, of actually where we come from and who we are <laughs> and what God made us to be. So it's a lot, it has a lot to do with you not understanding that you're not just a normal human being. You are a son and a daughter of God. It has a lot to do with understanding that we were born again from that incorruptible seed, which is the Word of God. Say, I'm born again. Born from above. How do you know that? The Bible says, your spirit testifies, his spirit testifies with your spirit that you are the children of God. So your heart knows. Your heart knows that you are a child of God. All right? How did you become a child of God? You believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's no longer just something that you try and believe. I'm not saying you, you believe like you are perfect in your faith. I'm just saying you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, the person of Christ. With your heart, you believe. He became real to you. All right, so what happened is the Pharisees came to Jesus. The Pharisees. And the Pharisees, uh, Jesus said to them, <laughs> don't run away, but he said it to the Pharisees, not to you. <laughs> he said, you are whitewashed tombstones. He said, you are looking pretty on the outside, but inside you are dead. He said, you are of your father, the devil. Listen, he said, because my words do not find entrance into your heart. <laughs> right? You are of your father, the devil, because my words do not find entrance into your heart. So the Word of God must find entrance into your heart, somewhere in life. And then it must continue to find entrance in order to transform you and change you. You need to keep on hearing the Word, and the Word, as you hear the Word, you are transformed by the hearing. Alright, but the first time, I, some have a date. Some just have this thing in their hearts, but... Something changed. And you can't pinpoint it to the exact date. But I'm telling you, even if you don't know there was a date, there was a date. <laughs> Where the Word of God found entrance into your heart. Where you were born from above. Alright, so let me explain this. <laughs> Alright. 
because th th there are some that believe that all are born again or all are already saved. You know, we, we believe you have to believe and accept the salvation of Christ to be saved. I know it's obvious to you, but for some, maybe it's not as obvious. <laughs> There's a lot of new doctrines coming around that says that everyone is saved, whether they believe it or not. Everyone will go to heaven. They don't have to believe ever and stuff like that, right? Okay, so I know it's, uh, for you, it's like, what? Are there, some of you maybe have never heard about it. But here's the thing. For a child to be born, <laughs> you need a man and a woman. You need a man and a woman for a child to be born. All right. Christ, the seed, or the Word of God, must find the womb, which is the people, the hearts of man, which must find entrance, and then a child is born, and you are born again or born from above. Do you get it? So the Word in itself is not causing people to be born again. The Word found entrance into the hearts of people. The Word finding entrance into the hearts of people causes them to be born again. But now, after that seed have entered, that is like, how can you know that you are born again? Well, Jesus didn't make it difficult. He came and died for the whole world. <laughs> all right? He died for all of you. All right, those who believe and those who don't believe. He died for everyone. He took their sins upon himself. He did, he did it all. He, he died for them. He, he did it all. He paid the price. All right? Okay, so, thank you, Jesus. All right? So, he paid the price. He did it all. Okay, so, if it was so difficult, why would Jesus come to the earth and die on the cross and those who really some way, by almost luck or chance, Find the way into the kingdom. You understand? Why, why will Jesus die and then make it difficult? It's as easy as only believe. Believing in Jesus Christ. But the word of God came to you and something changed in your heart. And now your spirit knows that you are a born again. You are a child of God. And now you no longer think of Jesus just in theory, but you believe. You believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. All right, so what can you do to be born again? Well, you can't sit in this church for long and not be born again. Because when the word is coming out here, it's all the word of Christ. And when the word is spoken and your heart can receive it, you'll be born again. <laughs> That's why even the young children, they can hear the word, boom, born again. Receive life. We get them baptized. <laughs> Children, we can get you baptized. We can baptize children. The moment they hear the word, and it's like they no longer just think of Jesus as um, in the same light as Superman, but they believe Jesus is real. And when they believe Jesus is real, they are born again. They believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and we baptize them, and they are saved. The baptism is just confirmation of what they believe. They're not saved through baptism. They're saved by believing. But the only way they can believe is by hearing. 1 John, 1 John 3 verse 1. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> See what an incredible quality of love the Father has given us. That we should be called and counted the children of God. And so we are. I want to read the Amplified here. Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not because it knew Him not. Beloved, now we are the sons of God. Now we are the sons of God. Then it continues. We do not know what we will be here after, but we know when He comes, we will already resemble Him and be like Him. Which is a teaching for another day. God is first perfecting the church. Transforming us into His very own image. Doing what He said He will do. And He's first finishing that before the next thing comes. And so, if you are waiting for the bus, unpack your bags. Put everything back and start living on earth and make a difference. <laughs> because He's not going to come 
before the church look like Jesus, walk like Jesus, act like Jesus. I just said it, but I just want to bring this in here. All right? But here's the thing. What great quality of love the Father bestowed upon us, that we should be called the children of God. And so we are His children, and it's the love of God. And by the love of God, He calls us His sons and His daughters. Okay, verse 21, James 1 verse 21. All right. So get, it says, get rid of all uncleanness and outgrowth of wickedness. How? In a humble heart and spirit, receive and welcome the word, which implanted and rooted in your hearts, contains the power to save your souls. Your souls. So, the word, welcome in your heart, or receive and welcome the word, when it's implanted and rooted in your heart, it contains the power to save your soul. Alright, so, the first day you got born again, a word entered. And that word, I started off with, let's just bring this thing together. <laughs> I started off with, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. The word became flesh and dwelled among us. Now that word speaks. And when he speaks, he's in every word he speaks. So as Jesus speaks through a person when he's preaching, or Jesus revealing himself to you, you heard a word from him, and the word entered your heart. The word is a word that he spoke, but the word is also Christ. The word entered your heart and you were born again. You became born again, born from above. With a seed that is immortal, <laughs> full of life. And that life seed of God entered your heart. And you are now no longer just a human being, but you are a son and a daughter of God. You have a complete different nature. You have a new nature. You have just one nature. You only have a memory of your old nature. Which must now happen, what must now happen to you is the renewal of the mind that you can see the truth concerning who you are in Christ. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> I, I, can, I can tell you why I say you have one nature. Paul says, I've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I that live. It is Christ that lives in me. You have one nature. You just have a memory of the old one. You're living in an identity crisis. Living like the old you while you are a complete new you. Yeah. Romans chapter 8 explains something. Verse 14. For who are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. Alright, so it doesn't mean when only you follow the Spirit. You, you have been born from above. But we can see that you are a son. Listen to this. Verse 15. For the Spirit which you have now received is not a spirit of slavery to put you once more in bondage to fear. But you have received the spirit of adoption. The spirit producing sonship in which we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit himself testifies together with your own spirit that, you, that we are the children of God. Testify with our own spirit that we are the children of God. But Romans chapter 8 explains that the Spirit of God inside of you, it says it's not a spirit of slavery, but it's a spirit of sonship. Yeah. Crying out, Abba, Father. He is your real Father. Yeah. He says you are His children and you are heirs of God also. You are his children and you are heirs of God. Now let's continue reading here. Verse 90. It says, For even the whole creation waits expectantly, longs earnestly for God's sons to be made known. For creation was subjected to frailty, not because of some intentional fault on its part, but by the will of him who so subjected it, yet with the hope, that nature itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and corruption and gain an entrance, entrance into the glorious freedom of God's children. We know that the whole creation has been moaning together, pains of labor until now, 
and but uh, creation waits for the and the whole thing continues there. <laughs> All right. Okay. Creation longs expectantly for God's children to be made known. Creation itself will be set free from rottenness to decay and corruption and gain entrance into the glorious freedom of God's children. When you are a child of God, my message today is just to explain a very simple thing. When you are a child of God, you're not a human being. Therefore, all those natural things that people say you can have a generational curse or this, no, you are a new creation. If you look at your genealogy, you'll find God and you. That's it. I'm no longer part of my natural family. I've been born again, redeemed from that life, placed in a new life in Christ. I've been take, he took me from darkness, placed me in the light. A lot of people are busy trying to get people free in the old, getting them out of all the curses. They're busy with all of that, but it's because we lack understanding of knowing who we are, where we are, and what God did when He entered our lives since we became born again. The Spirit of God is inside of us. We are the children of God. Now, the Spirit of God maybe is not fully seen in you, it's partially seen through us. Why? Because it's partially known and understood who we are. Our identity is partially known and understood by us. So when the Spirit comes and He reveals to us who Jesus Christ is and who we are in Him, we'll start to rise up to our real stature in Christ. And in that sense, Christ will be manifested and perfected within us. And then we will see more of Christ revealed in and through our lives. But it's not us becoming something we are not. It's us becoming someone we are. <laughs> and that is the key for, of the whole thing. As lo, so my transformation as a Christian is just me discovering me in Christ. And as I discover me in Christ, I become the real me in Christ. And you can see the real me in Christ. Then the old me well, that was not in Christ no longer exists. It's just a memory in my mind and I need to be renewed in the spirit. I need to be renewed in the spirit of my mind to see the truth about who I am in Christ. Well, thank you, Jesus. Okay. Father, thank you for your grace. Thank you that we are more than what we know, more than what we believe. Will you help us to see the truth? Will you help us to, to see that we are just like you? Like Father, like Son, made in the image of our Father. Father, help us never to fit in, always to stand out. May you, may you raise up your sons and your daughters in this place. To be the true reflection of the heart of the Father on this earth. Father, we want to reveal you on this earth. We don't care about being popular. <laughs> we care about accurately revealing your nature. And thank you that you give us favor in this town and in this nation and in the nations of the world. That you give us favor, Lord your favor, to proclaim your word and your message. Thank you, Jesus, that you give us boldness to declare the gospel. And thank you, Jesus, that you will continue to stretch forth your hand and that you will do signs, wonders, and miracles in our lives and through our lives. Thank you, Jesus. I pray that every person here will be awakened to the truth about who they are in you. Thank you, Jesus. Show a picture. I want you to, to just be quiet a moment and just allow God to speak to you. I want Him to show you just how He sees you. I can share certain things. He sees you completely holy because of what He did on the cross through the blood. You have received the sacrifice so you are washed in His blood. He, he's, I, I just want Him to give you a picture. Believe what he says to you this morning. Believe the truth. You are not what you think you are. You don't have to 
keep on coming into His presence, apologizing, just being like a worm. It's, it's like God wants to show you how He sees you. Yes, you can be humble in His presence, but don't walk out in, in the world with your head down. God is saying, lift up your head, my son. Lift up your head, my son, my daughter. You are my son. You are my daughter. Thank you, Jesus. Show yourself. Show yourself and show each person an image of how you view them. An image of your love. An image of the, the view, the image you have of them. Thank you, Jesus.